All right, in this section, we're going to talk all about pacifiers. I get a lot of questions about pacifiers and they are definitely not one size fits all. So in this section, I'm going to teach you how I normally educate on pacifier use using it as a tool to help guide you and your family in those decisions of how you want to introduce your pacifier. In general, I recommend wait to introduce that pacifier until breastfeeding is well established around two to three weeks. We want to make sure that your breast is the pacifier in those early weeks to help stimulate your milk supply and teach baby how to get a good deep latch. Um, if your baby is having difficulties coordinating their sucking, we may use it earlier as a suck training tool, but in general, that would be done under the guidance and care of a good lactation consultant, an occupational therapist, a speech therapist, or by your NICU team if you happen to have a premature baby or you're struggling in the hospital to latch and breastfeed. We do know that if babies are in NICU, if they were born premature and have a stay in the neonatal intensive care unit, that pacifiers are a great way for them to learn how to suck and swallow before having that added expectation of needing to swallow milk. So if you have a premature baby, you may have your baby introduced to a pacifier very early on by your care team. This is because non-nutritive sucking on the pacifier can help coordinate their mouth without the expectation of them doing anything. They don't have that milk volume to swallow, which they might not quite be ready for. So if you have a young baby, you may be introduced to a pacifier early because the research says it actually can help prepare them to be able to eat by mouth much sooner. Um, but again, that would be done by your care team. When we're talking about pacifiers, we want to think of it like a tool and a tool in the right hands and the right tool at the right time is just perfect for the job. In general, I'm recommending that a pacifier as a tool is not to prolong breastfeedings. It's really after feeding for reflux or digestion. So let's say you have a baby that takes a really big feeding really fast from the breast. Using a pacifier afterwards can help them rest and digest um, and can keep them swallowing just on their own saliva and secretions to help with any reflux that they may have. The American Academy of Pediatrics actually recommends using a pacifier for the first six months to help babies transition to sleep as it is protective of sudden infant death syndrome when it's used while babies are transitioning to sleep. As soon as that baby falls asleep, you would either take the pacifier out or let it fall out of their mouth and not put it back in. Another great way to use a pacifier is when you can't physically get to the baby. Maybe you're in the car, maybe you just need five seconds to run to the bathroom before you do a feeding. So it's not to prolong or delay the feeding from starting because of a magical time that you need to wait until the baby needs to eat, but it's because you can't physically get to the baby at that moment in time. Um, we do know from the research that sucking during shots and other interventions actually does act as a pain reliever. So if you know your baby has to have some kind of shot, it can be a great tool to use to help keep them calm. Um, again, in general, as soon as that baby falls asleep, as soon as they look comfortable, we're pulling that pacifier out. They should not be used to try to stretch a baby to uh, some magical time when they should be hungry. So if your baby's showing any kind of hunger cues, feed the baby. Your young baby under three to six months will want to feed every one, two, or three hours for any length of time. So if you think to yourself, hmm, it's only been two hours, the baby couldn't possibly be hungry, uh, that's actually not right. Your baby probably is hungry. So you don't want to use that pacifier to try to get them to stretch out between those feedings. Feed the baby. Use the pacifier afterwards. So when we're picking a pacifier, we really want to make sure that your baby can go back and forth between the breast and the pacifier without having um, a difficult time latching. Um, so when you're breastfeeding, your nipple actually goes into baby's mouth. Their tongue changes the shape of your nipple to fill their mouth. Your nipple will get larger and bigger inside their mouth. So your nipple changes to fit in your baby's anatomy, whereas a pacifier is firm and rigid. So your baby's tongue has to change its shape to accommodate that firm, rigid nipple. So they really do work completely differently. And it's why some babies do just fine at the breast, but they'll struggle to latch to a pacifier because we're asking the tongue to do something different than what it does at the breast. 
We also want that baby to go back and forth without getting a pinchy latch when they come back to you. So in general, we're looking for a nice round nipple on that pacifier that will more likely mimic the round shape of your breast and what it should look like when that nipple is inside their mouth. My two favorites right now and always have been the Philips Avent Soothe, which is what you get in the hospital. It has a nice long round nipple and it does promote a deep latch. And my new favorite is the Ninico. It's a much softer pacifier that actually does change shape in baby's mouth. So it does work more like how your breast nipple will work inside baby's mouth. And you'll see some videos of babies using those pacifiers in just a second. Less optimally are the pacifiers that are flat and pinched. Um, the orthodontic ones are the ones that have the bump on top with the flat on the bottom. Now, again, we're asking the baby to do something different with their mouth than what they're used to at the breast. And sometimes we need to accommodate this difference by using a different kind of pacifier. So your MAM pacifier that's flat, um, your, uh, there's other brands that are kind of pinched looking. If your baby can't take a round pacifier but is okay taking something flat, great. I'm probably not going to touch it as long as they can go back and forth between breast and pacifier without an issue. Um, if your baby does have a high palate or a tongue tie where that tongue can't cup around a round nipple or they have a really high palate they need to fill or are really gaggy, sometimes these other less optimal pacifiers can actually work okay while you're addressing those other issues, while you're addressing the tongue tie, while you're working on tongue cupping in your oral motor skills, which again can be done with the help of a qualified IVCLC lactation consultant, a um, special specially trained pediatric speech or occupational therapist. When pacifiers become a problem, it's usually because they've been overused or not used correctly or used for too long. So the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends weaning completely from a pacifier by six months of age. We know from the research, from dental research, that pacifiers will start to impact dentition around two years of age, but you will absolutely shift how your baby's teeth develop by if you're still using that pacifier at four. So dentists will say, yeah, you can use them up until about two, but sometime between two and four, you're going to actually start causing a high palate. You can shift how those front teeth come in. They may come out, they mean like buck teeth. Um, they may change how those front teeth come in. So you definitely do need to make sure that they're completely out by two years old. Um, they do also impact your tongue resting posture. So we know that babies should be obligatory nose breathers. They should always be breathing through their nose, including while they're asleep. And their tongue should always rest up on the roof of their mouth because by resting up on the roof of their mouth, it puts pressure on their palate to flatten the palate and make it nice and wide and flat. That then gives you lots of air in your nasal passages. So if baby's tongue is always resting low because of a tongue tie or because there's a pacifier in there that will actually change the shape of their palate. It makes it high and arched which then impacts their nasal breathing and their respiratory tract. So we really wanna make sure that when babies are sleeping or as much as possible, we're promoting that closed mouth with the tongue up on the roof of the mouth for good facial development. Um, because that pacifier can absolutely impact how they're breathing and eventually with lots of overuse of the pacifier, it can impact how their face develops. Now again, hear me on that. If you are occasionally using a pacifier, if you're using it for to get baby to sleep when you're in the car, when they're resting and digesting, if they have reflux, occasional use is not going to cause any harm or damage to your baby. But in general, we wanna have the pacifier in as little as possible to be promoting good development. When you're introducing a pacifier, if you've taken any of my other courses and you've heard me talk about the reflexive suck, babies for the first three to four months are relying on reflex and instinct to suck. So if you put something in their mouth, they're going to suck on it. And um, if there's any kind of volume in there, they will swallow. So in general, if you're trying to get a baby to take a pacifier, you do wanna introduce it while they're still under a reflexive suck, sometime between two to six weeks. 
if they can never grab onto that pacifier. Um, so say you try two, three, four, five different pacifiers and they can never get a good suction to that. That tells us there's most likely something going on in their mouth. There might be a tongue tie there. Um, they might have different anatomy. They might have a high palate or a sensitive gag where their tongue isn't physically able to come and cup around that nipple, create a vacuum seal with the roof of their mouth and keep that pacifier in. So if during the reflexive stage, the first six to eight weeks, your baby can just never grab on and latch to that pacifier, then you may wanna, again, be seen by a lactation consultant. Um, if you're introducing that pacifier after three to four months, that's when babies switch from reflexes to getting to choose what they suck and swallow on. So some babies who are used to a breastfeeding swallow where again, your nipple changes shape in their mouth, they create a vacuum with their tongue and they change you. They may struggle a little on a pacifier because they have to accommodate that hard rigid nipple. Um, so you Usually babies without any oral restrictions with a good strong tongue and strong coordination can latch to a pacifier at any time. If they're not, sometimes it can indicate that there's something else going on in the mouth. But in reality, babies never need to take a pacifier. Pacifiers are designed after the breast and not the other way around. So the breast should be the primary pacifier when at all possible. So if your baby won't take a pacifier, it does not mean that there is something wrong with your baby, especially if they are breastfeeding just fine. It means that they prefer the biological norm, which is your breast over a man-made tool. So don't worry if for any reason they can't take it. In very young babies, you also need to be mindful that they have what's called a tongue thrust reflex. It basically, anything that goes in that's not the breast is gonna pop right back out. This is a protective mechanism to protect baby from swallowing pieces before they're ready for solid foods. So if you pop that pacifier in, they get some good sucks and then all of a sudden it spits back out. It's not that your baby doesn't like it, it's that they're relying on reflexes to protect them from swallowing something that they shouldn't. So what you may need to do is while you're teaching your baby to take the pacifier, you may need to help hold it in their mouth and give them just a little cheek support so they can really use that tongue to grab onto the pacifier nipple, create a vacuum in their mouth and keep it without tongue thrusting it out. So there's a couple dynamics at play here when you're introducing that pacifier. So again, why won't my baby take a pacifier? If it's a really young baby, it may be because, maybe because they have a tongue or lip tie. They can't, their anatomy is restricted. It won't move in the direction we want it to and they just can't grab onto it and create a vacuum. They may have some oral motor weakness. Maybe there's some weak cheek muscles or a weak tongue muscles or they can't quite coordinate it. If they're really teeny tiny, if they're premature, they might just not know what to do with their mouth yet and they might just need a little time and practice. And sometimes it might just be that you introduced it too late. Again, that is not a problem if your baby won't take a pacifier. If they'll only take the breast, that is the biological norm. But if you want to have a pacifier somewhere in your routine, you do want to introduce it while they're relying on reflexes. And there's some of those other strategies you can do to try to help keep them in. When we're talking about pacifier weaning, again, in general, try to limit that pacifier use to begin with. Keep it for just transitioning to sleep, taking it out once they're asleep, using it for digestion or in the car when you can't get to the baby. And as we talked about earlier, we're wanting to wean that sometime by six months, no later than two years. Um, and there's all kinds of strategies that you can do for pacifier weaning. And in general, I recommend schedule a private consultation for that when you're ready, as the strategies that work for one won't work for another. And now that's all you, I know about pacifiers and picking your pacifier. I'm going to show you some different videos here of how to train the baby to take a pacifier, how to introduce it, and some of those holds to help them learn how to grab onto that pacifier. If your baby is gagging on the pacifier, it might be too long or too big. You may want to try a different pacifier. And know that if they won't take one, but they're taking the breast just fine, that usually there's no issue with the baby. Um, they just prefer you as their pacifier instead of a man-made device. Now you know. Pacifier, you're gonna put your finger in the back. Okay. We're gonna do the same as with the breast. We want her to open for it. And I'm just gonna give her just a little bit of cheek support. Oh, I see, okay. 
she did a beautiful job grabbing onto that. Now we want to make sure she can sustain the latch to it. When you have a tongue tie, it can make sustaining the latch difficult, but she's now got that freed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to release her cheeks first once she's sucking and got a good rhythmical suck popped out right uh -huh. so we've got to get her to create a vacuum in her mouth so I'm going to give her a little cheek support and then I'm going to tug with this finger so I'm going to do just a little gentle tug to see if she can get it to stay in her mouth a little cheek support as if she were at the breast and then just a little tug there she goes nice that's a much stronger vacuum now she's got just a little weakness there because she pops it off mm -hmm. okay so what we want her to do is create stamina to keep it in so you're going to use this as an exercise you're going to do a little cheek support and little tugging on this do you see how i'm doing just a little tug where it's kind of pulling it out of her yeah. mouth but it's triggering that suck reflex mm -hmm. right. so she's going to need probably a week or two of you training her okay. to get the tongue stamina to keep it in her mouth there that'll she help goes. with everything as well too right good yeah okay. exactly Okay. Yay. There you go. <laughs> you want to do with this is you want to have a root just as if she's rooting at the breast. So you're going to stroke the lips until she opens. Oh, I got a root. Big, big, big. There we go. Then to teach her, you're going to put your finger in the hole and do just a little bit of cheek support as if she's back at the breast. So we'll wait until she's really latched to that. We're gonna give her a minute. She's working on a poop. Yeah. And then I'm gonna take my cheek support off. So I'm gonna try again. Good job. I know. I give just a little cheek support. Hi. I can put her on her side as if she's at the breast. She's ready for nine. <laughs> and take the keep the cheek support. There we go. Oh, I know you're ready for nine. -night. So again, it's gonna take a little while to teach it. So it's finger here as if there's a breast there, a little cheek support. And then you're slowly removing the pieces. as she learns to grab onto it. So babies have a tongue thrust reflex. It's gonna kick things out of their mouth to help prevent them from swallowing things before they should, right? So the breast has bulk behind it. It stays in the mouth because there's weight behind it. So we can teach the pacifier by just giving just a little external support until she that tongue learns to make that vacuum seal around it. I really do like that this is a nice round pacifier because this is how your nipple should go in and out. <laughs>